Hello everybody and welcome to another special video. This time we're taking a look at, um, uh, this is a Steelers-centered Steelers -centered video. This is a video talking about the 2023 schedule. It has just come out within the last 20 minutes of recording this video, uh, around 8 o'clock. And, um, and, uh, and if you're wondering if there's going to be any big, like, announcements coming up about ne what I'm doing for the channel next year regarding the Stairway to 7 series, I'm just going to tell you now, I'm not doing Stairway to 7 this year. I'm just... After what happened last year, like I felt like is where I got so stressed out after, the, especially after that home loss to the Ravens at, at the beginning of December. I was, I just felt like I was jinxing this team too much that I just couldn't take it any. I just couldn't handle myself jinxing this team going forward. I feel like the, I felt like Robert De Niro's character in Silver Linings Playbook. I feel like like whenever I do stuff like that, it's kind of, I'm kind of jinxing this team so much. It's just like, like I get scared sometimes when I do stuff like that. So. I'm not gonna do, so I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna I will cover those games probably during whenever I do the reviewing network live show in the fall. I'll probably just bring it up briefly after the show, or or during or during the show I should say. Like it's not gonna be like a huge big deal, but um, if I do go to any of these games or if I if I do set anything special with, regarding these games, I'll definitely show off that video too. So you're not you're still gonna get some content from me regarding the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there's nothing to worry about that. I'm just telling you right now. I'm not doing Stairway to 7 this year, but uh, you want to hear me talk about the 2023 schedule, and um, I want to hear about it too, because we've been hearing, because we've been waiting to see what the schedule's going to look like, there's been some leaks early on, and it's finally out, so let's start off, before we get to the regular season schedule, we've got the preseason schedule, and the preseason schedule this year is pretty interesting, because this is the only... I think this is the first time under this new rule that they have that they they're only the Steelers are only getting one home preseason game and they are getting two um, two two games on the road. I think I don't remember if they did that. They might have done it two years ago. I think it's I think it's like the same thing. I think it's like one, every year it's the other way around. Like next like last year they had two home games and they had one away game. I think it's the same thing this time around. It's two. Is I think it's the opposite this time around, where it's two away games and one home game, and next year it's probably two home ga games and one away game. And um, so we've got uh, three games here. Uh, we've got Tampa. We've got at Tampa Bay on Friday, August 11th. Uh, the Buffalo Buffalo will be the home game on Saturday, August 19th, and the, the last away game is going to be at Atlanta. All those games will be uh, Tampa Bay's on August 11th, Buffalo on August 19th, and the date and time for the Atlanta game has yet to be determined. So. Uh, nothing too crazy on that front. There, just three games to get to to begin the season with a, the with these three preseason games, and then after that, the regular season schedule. So, those are the preseason games. Nothing too crazy. Nothing for me to really delve into on those. But let's get to what you really want to hear me talk about, and that is the regular season schedule. So the regular season begins with the first home opener game for the Steelers in nearly ten years. It's hard to believe. It's been ten years. It's been nearly ten years since the first home since the first home game of the season was the opener, uh, 2014. The Steelers again went against the Browns in that game, but uh, this time around it's going to be the 49ers coming to town after they had been in the NFC Championship game the year before with Brock Purdy. The quarterback situation there is to be determined right now. They don't know if it's going to be Brock Purdy or is it going to be Trey Lance or maybe Sam Darnold, but. Um, uh, that's going to be the home opener on Sunday, September 10th at 1 p.m. The Steelers host the 49ers, and uh, that should be a pretty interesting game to see what happens there. Uh, then we got back-to-back -back primetime games that following that. September 18th, Monday Night Football. The Steelers host the Browns. That'll be on ABC and ESPN. Um, Steelers have been pretty good at home in the regular season against the Browns. They have not lost to the Browns at home since 2003 the hope is that that doesn't change so but uh, then again you never know like i don't i still don't think the cleveland browns are that great of a football team honestly and i think most people would agree that th that's not the case i mean i don't know i mean that's just my take on it but um shortly after that they travel to las vegas on sunday night football they will take on the raiders and of course the steelers had that great christmas eve game against the raiders where pickett throws the, t throws the touchdown to pickens to win the game so this is a rematch of that this time it's going to be in las vegas when the Steelers go to the West Coast, they are not the same football team. They are not really as good. They are not as good as you would think they would be, because I don't know what it is. Like it's really hard for them to win on the West Coast, and especially against the Raiders. The last time they beat the Raiders in anywhere on the West Coast was 1995. 1995 was, and that was when Neil O'Donnell was the quarterback. That's when they had Cordell Stewart. That was when Bill Cowher was only in his third 
fourth year as the head coach of that te team, and it's just like, I'm, for, I'm guessing maybe it'll be different because it's in Las Vegas instead of Oakland, but, you know, nearly 30 years since the win on the West Coast there, and, um... Uh, that's that's concerning. I mean, the Raiders are still our team that we really don't know too much about. Derek Carr's not there anymore. They've got Jimmy Garoppolo there now, but um, I don't know. That's what that's going to be one of those iffy ones, in my opinion. That could be a that could be a game that the Steelers could probably win, but it could be one of those ugly ugly wins or ugly losses. It could go either way on that front. And speaking of ugly lo ugly games that could get really ugly, let's go to Week Four. Week Four is at Houston now. The Steelers have had some good luck against the Texans over the last couple of years, but they've had some games where you looked at that and you looked at them and you went, "How did you lose those games?" Like the first year the the Texans came into came into fruition, the first year they were they were a team in 2002, they lost that game in at Heinz Field, and it still baffles so many people on how did you lose that game. And then they lost to them again in 2011. But for the most part, they've done a pretty good job against them. This is a game that really could get messy pretty quickly if the Steelers aren't careful because you've got a new a rookie quarterback. You've got a Texans team that looks a lot better than they've had the last couple of years. So that game could be a very, very tough one. But um, So that's, uh, that's uh, week four. That'll be on October 1st. Then on October 8th, they come back home to host the Baltimore Ravens, the first of two games to see... The first of two games, of course, they'll host them again at the end. They'll go to Baltimore at the end of the season, and um, uh, that that one can also get pretty interesting too. Like the Ravens usually start off strong in the season, but then when they go, when they get go is after that, they just kind of dip. They kind of fall off afterwards. Like they're not as good as they usually are at the beginning of the season. So uh, this one, is, this one could get rough too. This is a, not a good start for the Steelers going forward because you've got. Two games that I think the Steelers could win. They could win against the 49ers. They could win against the Browns. The Raider at the Raiders, at the Texans, and then versus an early season Baltimore team. That's where it could get pretty messy. I think the Steelers might have a tough time at the start of the season. They could be two and three when we get to the bye week. Which let's talk about that bye week for a second. So the Steelers have a week six bye week, which is fairly early on, and that's that is also very concerning too because it's very early in the season. Usually the the bye weeks have been coming in November, which is a good place to a good gap in between the first half of the season and the second half of the regular season. But now you have this week six bye, and that means you have to play twelve consecutive games afterwards. And even at this point, and even in if you let's say that is let's say, is remember the one seed is the one that gets home field advantage now in in the playoff picture. So let's assume they make the playoffs. They they'd be playing for what. Six, 16 consecutive weeks if they get to, if they get lucky, but without that rest, man, that's a t that's a tough stretch to go on. That's a really really tough stretch to go on at that point. That bye week is very very concerning, being early on in the season. But um, uh, that's the early, is that's so that's the week six bye week. I, I mean, I didn't make the schedule, but that's just what it is. But uh, let's see what happens afterwards. Let's go ahead to week number seven. So week seven, you've got the Los Angeles Rams. They go to SoFi Stadium. The Rams, I mean, last year they were not that good of a football team. But then again, there was a ton of injuries. But this time you have uh, Matthew Stafford coming back, Cooper Cups coming back, um, uh, Aaron Donald's coming back next year, coming back too. So the Rams should be better than they were last year. But and again, uh, West Coast, West Coast is usually the toughest toughest area for the Steelers to play in because they don't usually win a ton of games there. And um, uh, one with it's, this is going to be another tough one too. I mean, I th could see the Steelers possibly winning this one, but um, as long as they're not out, but as long as they're not get, losing their lead by, is there, uh, as long as they're not down by a whole lot, I think they should be able to make it close. But then again, the last time they played in that stadium, it was against the Chargers on Sunday night, and that game ended up being not as good as it should have, not as good as it should have been. They kept, tried to come back from it, but um, no luck on that front. But um, Anyway, um, week eight, they come home to face the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are a much better team than they were the last time they came to Pittsburgh. Uh, Trevor Lawrence got him one of a playoff game last year. Is got him a, Trevor Lawrence and the defense helped him win a playoff game last year against Los Angeles and the Chargers that basically fell cratered badly in that game, but um, in the second half. But um, the Jaguars are a much better, improved team than they were the last time they were here, and this should be a game that I think. Because of the home field advantage, I think the Steelers have the advantage, but 
Uh, like I said, the Charger, the Jaguars are really good. Were really good last year. It'll be very interesting to see if they actually manage to pull, to pull to pull this one off. Um, so what am I do? So where am I on my standings here? I think, I think at this point I have a mat. Let's see, one, one, two, two, three, four. I think I'm gonna have them about three and four at this point. And then you've got a Thursday night football matchup against the Tennessee Titans, which. You know, the Tennessee Titans, they're a team that's rebuilding as well. They just got Will Levis in the draft. Uh, they're a team that they're not, as, they're not as threatening as the Houston Texans. I think the Houston Texans are a much more improved team than the Tennessee Titans are. And that's a, team, that's a game I think the Steelers can get, at least get back to 500 with if with that game because it's going to be at home. It's going to be on Thursday night, and then they'll have a couple days, and then they'll have a couple extra days to get ready for the game against the Packers in Week 10. Which will be the first, which will be the first year for Jordan Love now that Aaron Rodgers is in New York with the Jets, and um, that should give the Steelers a chance to win that game as well. Go to five and four, and then hopefully sweep the series the next week against Cleveland, which the which should be put them at um, put them at six and four, six and four. I think. Let me double check for a sec. Yeah, we'll put them at seven and four after Cleveland if they should should they sweep the series, which they should. I mean, I don't. I still don't think Cleveland is that good of a football team, honestly. But, um, but I think at that point they should be good. They should be good at seven and four, and then you get to Week Twelve at Cincinnati. The Steelers have struggled mightily against Cincinnati the last couple of years. They managed to get the big win on Week Week One last year at Cincinnati. They'll be back there for that game on Thanksgiving weekend. And the Cincinnati Bengals—they're a tough team right now. They've got the pieces that they need to really compete. To, in, in the tier of the AFC, so that's going to be really tough for them to do, especially since the last time they played them on this week, the Steelers played them on this weekend, they got blown out by them in 2021, and so that would take them back down to 7-5 and five by that point. Uh, so week 13, we've got the Arizona Cardinals, who may be just the worst team in the league this season, this coming season, because Kyler Murray, there's no real, there's no real certainty on whether or not he'll be back in time for the game, in which... Actually, come to think of it, December third, probably he he may be back for that game. But the Cardinals overall are just a team that looks that looks really lacking compared to previous years. Like the year they w went to the playoffs, they started off strong. They got the they were up they were like I think eight and zero at one point, but then they lost to the Green Bay Packers, and then they just kind of dipped off and get, pretty much gave the Rams that division that should have been theirs. And um, but this season, there's a whole new it's a whole new team. The status of Kyler Murray is to be determined at this point. That's a game I think they could win. I think they can win that game at home. And then comes Thursday Night Football again, this time with the New England Patriots. Juju Smith-Schuster comes home. And uh, these games are usually tough, and especially in December. Uh, the Steelers should win this game, but the Patriots will probably find a way to win that one as well. So I think that puts them at 7-6, and six, if I'm not mistaken, by my predictions here. I think the Steelers will... I think the Steelers should win that game, but they could also lose that game too. So that's why I have it at seven and six. So by then they should be eight and five by my by my calculations from doing this right off the top of my head. And then week fifteen they go to Indianapolis, which should be an easy game to beat because they usually find a way to win against the Colts. So that should take them to nine and five by week fifteen. Uh, week sixteen, a, cr a Saturday game, which will be on NBC. Uh, Saturday again is that'll be. At, versus Cincinnati at home, so it's not technically a Christmas Eve game. It's kind of a set, it's a Saturday game, but uh, I think the Steelers will find a way to w at least win that one. So that should take them to about okay. So it's ten and five. This, again, I'm just doing this off the top of my head right now. I don't have a calculator with me to actually really guesstimate this. But by December 23rd, they should be ten and five. They should be in a good position. But then they got to go back to the West Coast to take on the Seattle Seahawks, which was a drastic, drastically improved team than they were last year, than they were the year before with Russell Wilson under Geno Smith. I would expect a little bit of some aggression on that front, but they're on the West, the Steelers are going to the West Coast again. It's very tough to play there, so uh, I could see them probably losing that game. I think Seattle will still be vying for a playoff spot on their part, so they should be ten and six. And then we get to the Week 18 finale against Baltimore, and I think that. Steelers have done pretty well in Baltimore, and with a game like this, with some playoff implications on the line for both the Steelers and the Ravens, I think the Steelers will find a way to win that game. I could easily see this team going to 11 and six if the cards fall in their in their favor. There are some games there where I think they should. Be, most of these games should be winnable games, but 
there's going to be those games where the team that they're playing against has a losing record or a, a bad record, and then they'll find a way to lose that game. That's the that's my thinking on that front there. Um, do I think it's going to be enough to win the division? Probably not. I think Cincinnati will still probably win the division easily. I think Baltimore will still try to squeak in maybe as a third is right behind the Steelers or just above them. I think the Steelers at 10, at 11 and 6 should make the playoffs, but this is going to be a really interesting schedule to see. It's going to be very interesting to see how it pans out. I haven't seen the rest of the schedule as of yet, but um that's it. this is just my first look at the schedule overall. Like I said, the schedule just came out within the last half hour, so I wanted to make a quick video summing up my thoughts on how I think the season goes for them. And like I said, if the cards hold for them, I think it's going to be an 11-6 and six run. I think it makes them get into the playoffs. I think this team's going to be very interesting to watch overall. You've got uh, good players on there. Kenny Pickett showed his promise in the second half of the season. Najee Harris is going to get some help now with Broderick Jones now in the offensive line. Darnell Washington, they draft him. They got help on the defense with Joey Porter Jr. being drafted to them. I think this team really has a chance to really be of an underdog team that makes the playoffs. I think there's a lot of pieces there. I like the direction that Omar Khan is taking this team going forward. I think there's a real good chance they make the playoffs, but we still have to wait to see what happens. But I'm really looking forward to see what happens going forward. So, like I said, there's going to be some more Steeler videos coming up within the year. Hopefully I'll get to go to some of these games, maybe some preseason games, maybe that preseason game against Buffalo. But we'll have to wait and see. But, um... Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the schedule? What's your record prediction? And um, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, hopefully this leads to a promising season for the Steelers, but um, let me know your thoughts down below. So thanks again for watching this video. Um, let me know your thoughts. Again, let me know your thoughts down below. So until the next time I see you, take care.